Hello everyone, today we are going to study about controlling and troubleshooting the Red Hat Enterprise Linux boot process and this video is mainly to understand the RHEL 7 boot process. So I have written all the steps in a file so that it is easier for us to understand and memorize things. So let me open that file first. So let's learn all the steps in detail. So what happens when you switch on your machine? Right, so first step is machine is powered on and the system firmware, it will run the post test and it will initialize some of the hardware. So what happens when you power on your machine? First thing which occurs that is running the post test. Now what is a post test? It is, you can say it is a diagnostic test which helps to determine that whether our computer keyboard, our RAM, our disk drive, uh, devices and all other hardware that are working properly or not. So first thing is that that your system firmware, firmware will run the post test and it will initialize some of the hardware. Then in second step the firmware will look for the master boot record. So it will look for the MBR or, or some bootable device that from where it has to load the kernel. Right. So third step is firmware will read the bootloader from the disk and it will pass on the control to it. Now system firmware will read the bootloader from the disk and in RHEL 7 it will be grub2 and this thing is configured by using grub2 install. So I will tell you some files and some configuration files and some uh, some directories which are responsible for making that step to, to happen. So after this step occurs then fourth step is that bootloader will load the configuration from the disk and will present us the menu. Now grub which is our grand unified bootloader it will load the configuration from the disk and will present us the menu now uh, in our machine there can be um, dual booting for example you have done windows and linux both installation or there can be standalone your uh, linux machine only um, but in both the cases you will be presented one menu page and you have to make selection that whether you want to start windows or you want to start the linux machine so that menu is presented to you that is also a part of booting process and this happens by etc grub.d etc default grub slash boot slash grub2 slash grub.conf so these are some configuration files or the directories which are helping us to achieve this step now after that you can make the choice between the operating system that you want to start windows or you want to start linux or the automatic timeout will occur there is a counter i'll show you that counter is decremented so before that counter goes away you can make the choice or the automatic uh, timeout will occur then the grub will load the configured kernel and the init ram fs from the disk and it will place it into the memory now a kernel which is a set of programs you know it will be doing something it will be doing something it will be executing if it is brought into the main memory so uh, after it comes into the main memory then only the kernel itself can do something right so what is in a tram fs it is the you can say it is the archive which contains the kernel modules or you can say the entire usable system itself so it is loaded into the main memory and then the bootloader will hand over the control of the system to the kernel now this step is achieved by using etc dracut.com file and after that after the kernel is loaded into the main memory then bootloader will hand over the control to the kernel now kernel will initialize the hardware it can find drivers in initramfs and it will execute the first process of your linux 
machine which is the system d process now kernel will initialize the hardware um, whose drivers are there in initram fs and then it will execute the s bin init process or the system d process and it will assign pid 1 to that process then what happens then the actual mounting of the file system is done so there is a file in your um, slash etc which is file system table fs tab file and it contains all the mount points and all your um, devices all your memory devices and the mount points so according to that file according to that configuration your actual root file system it will be mounted on slash sysroot right so after that what happens then system d it will look for the default target now what is the target target you can say that target is uh, means sometimes our system starts in uh, the graphical user interface and sometimes it starts in cli interface so whichever the default target set in your machine according to that it will start your system in that uh, in that dif in that state so target is the set of units which should be activated to reach a desired system state if you have set um, the graphical dot target to be the default target then your machine will start in gui mode always if it is set to cli multi user dot target then it will start into that state okay so whichever the default target is we will learn about it in detail in the uh, next tutorials how to change the target how to switch from one target to the other target and how to use it for troubleshooting so we will learn all that but in this video we are going to uh, we are just studying about the bo whole booting process because that is also important if you don't know that how your system boots up in uh, at what step what thing occurs then how you can take the control in between to troubleshoot your machine right so this is very important so these are the steps which are followed for booting your machine first thing is that you will power on your machine and the system firmware will run the post test some of the initial some of the hardware will be initialized then after that firmware uh, firmware will look for the master boot record then firmware will read the boot loader from the disk and it will pass on the control to the boot loader then boot loader will show us the menu that which operating system you want to start after we make the choice or the uh, automatic timeout occurs then the bootloader will load the kernel into the main memory after that control is given to the kernel then kernel will initialize all the hardware it can find drivers in the file system and it will execute the first process which is system d process after that your actual file system is mounted on slash this root so mounting occurs then it will look for the default target all these these steps 7th 8th uh, these steps 8th and 9th step they are done by the system d process the first process right so system d it will look for the default target means in which mode in which state it has to start the system whether it is graphical interface or the um, or the command line interface so it will present you the machine to use in that state right so this is the whole booting process and let's learn a few commands related to um, shutdown and rebooting of our machine there is a command system ctl power off which powers off your machine there is system ctl reboot command which is used to reboot our machine system ctl halt which is used to power off the machine and only power off reboot and halt also works what system ctl power off does it will stop all the running services and it will unmount all the file systems and then power down the machine reboot what it does it will stop all the running services unmount all the file system and then restart your machine and 
what halt will do halt will stop the system but um, unlike the power off what it will do it will uh, not power off the system but it will bring the system down to a point where it is safe to manually power it off right so these are the commands which are used to switch off and restart the machine there is init 0 which also shuts down your machine and init 6 which restarts your machine so uh, this is all about the booting process in detail in next tutorial we will study how to what are the targets how to change the targets how to switch from one target to the other and how can we um, change the target at boot time so that we can do the troubleshooting so all those things we will learn in the next tutorial so leaving you with the linux boot process again by using init 6 command so what it will do it will restart your machine so now you can observe all the points that we meant that we learned uh, closely so here the menu is presented to you So it has started your machine in the graphical interface because that was the default target set in this machine. So this is how the booting process occurs. Thank you so much.